was Maryland's first capital, founded in 1634. Today, Historic St. Mary's City is an interactive exhibit of history and archaeology. Enhanced with living history demonstrations and interpreters, Historic St. Mary's gives visitors a way to experience what life was like when Maryland was first getting started. Let's start with how a colonist got here, aboard our very own replica ship. Charles I, the King of England, granted the land of what is now Maryland to Cecil Calvert, the second Baron of Baltimore. He expected that the colonists would establish a settlement that would provide new trade opportunities and profit for the Calvert family. English colonists survived a four-month-long journey from London to the New World. They took two ships, the Ark, which carried colonists, and the Dove, which took a small crew and many supplies. The ship you see here is a working replica of the Dove here at Historic St. Mary's. On the command, give! The colonists sailed through the Potomac River looking for a place to settle and eventually found the land off the St. Mary's River. They made a deal with the Yakomako Indians who were living there and began to set up their colony, living in peace side by side for some time. In the Woodland Indian Hamlet, you can see how the Yakomako Indians lived and sustained their way of life. The Indians lived in witch ops like this one, made with wooden frames and bundled grass. Over time, colonists established a thriving town in St. Mary's City. The buildings that you see here are reconstructed versions of the ones that existed in colonial times. As you can see, there are many buildings that are marked with wooden frames. This represents where archaeologists have discovered 17th century buildings. Imagine the frames as buildings to get a sense of how the city would have been set up in the late 1600s. But why would colonists leave England and come to the New World? The first reason is opportunity. In the New World, almost anyone who worked hard could own land and make a profit, and there was a lot of land to be had. The most popular way to make money was to establish a tobacco plantation, such as the Godiah Spray Plantation at Historic St. Mary's. Tobacco is very popular in Europe and could be traded for items that the colonists would need, such as tools, cloth, and spices. Tobacco became so important to the colonists in Maryland that it came to be the currency used to purchase items on a credit system to accommodate harvest seasons. Many people came to the colonies to work as indentured servants to pay off the cost of their passage to Maryland, and after working for a few years, were free to settle as they liked. Another reason for English people to make the journey to the New World was religious freedom. In Maryland, all people were allowed to practice their religion freely. The Brick Chapel of 1667 stands as a monument of faith and religious tolerance, as separation of church and state was mandated. In the heart of historic St. Mary's City is Town Center, where visitors can explore how the colonists lived. Watch a demonstration of how to make quill pens and write with feathers and ink. Period interpreters will show us around the garden and tell us about what kinds of plants they grew. Stop by the print house to see how many steps were necessary to make just one printed sheet of paper. Let's head over to the reconstructed ordinary in town center. So, welcome to Smith's Ordinary. This is our 1600s era hotel and tavern. Now, this is actually your budget accommodations, because to stay here it will cost you 14 pounds of tobacco, about 10 pounds for a hot meal, cooked in the open hearth behind me, and 4 pounds for a night's rest on our beds right here. If you go to a fancy private inn, you might get a whole bed to yourself. This one you will be sharing with two or three other people, other travelers like yourself. But the fancy private inn will cost you a hundred pounds of tobacco for a night. You're guaranteed a hot meal for your ten pounds of tobacco, but you're not guaranteed your own bowl or utensils you might be sharing with the person next to you. And although people are not really conscious of germ theory at that time, they might not want to share with people that they don't know. The children of the colonies learn tasks according to their gender. Boys might have learned how to stack fencing, make cider, or build a house to scale. The girls learned to cook, sew, garden, or dye cloth. 
Sometimes, children had time to play games such as bowling or coit, the game you see visitors trying out here. Year by year, the colonists increased in number and St. Mary's City continued to grow. In 1676, they built the Brick State House, a symbol for the city's prominence in the Maryland government. This is a reconstruction of the original State House, rebuilt in 1934 to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the colony. St. Mary's City was the capital of Maryland until the capital was moved to Annapolis in 1695. The Living Museum of Historic St. Mary's gives us an opportunity to see what life was like in the original colony of St. Mary's City.